27 Corvette is the coolest car America makes right now. Fight me. Now to properly understand why this generation Corvette is so cool, you have to understand the previous generations. I would argue that since the fourth generation Corvette, the C4, Chevrolet has overpromised on the performance of the Corvette. Now, Chevrolet has always made a point of producing these cars at an affordable price point, meaning that they were accessible to normal people. That in itself says a lot about Chevrolet and what they wanted the Corvette to be. But Chevrolet made a big claim. They said that their Corvette was America's sports car. And the problem with that is, once you start putting the Corvette on a global scale, things start to fall apart. We're gonna start with the C4 Corvette, the fourth generation. It debuted in 1984, and it was the first complete redesign since the introduction of the Corvette 30 years before. At the time, America made one of the fastest cars in the world, and it was certainly the fastest from the States. With a less than seven second zero to 60 time, America was finally joining the global sports car battle. And in a straight line, it was a serious competitor, taking on even the same year Porsche 911. They were both capable of a sub 7 0 to 60 time, but once you took them out onto a more technical curvy road, not even the Corvette's transverse fiberglass monoleaf spring suspension. Transverse fiberglass monoleaf spring system. Suspension. Suspension. Not even the Corvette's transverse fiberglass. 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 <laughs> Corvette's transverse fiberglass microleaf spring system could keep up. Close. Damn it. Monoleaf, not microleaf. Monoleaf. Mono transverse fiberglass monoleaf. Not even Corvette's new transverse fiberglass monoleaf spring suspension system could keep up with Porsche's decades of racing history. Yeah. <sighs> I got it. Skip ahead to the next generation, the C5, and we see more advancements from Chevrolet. The all-new LS1 pumps out a healthy 345 horsepower at minimum. In fact, the new generation brought all-around improvements, but none of this can help the fact that the competition from other countries was steep. By 1997, the first year that the C5 was available, the bar for a quick car had been considerably raised. The Corvette was no longer featured on top 10 fastest car lists. In fact, it wasn't even number one in America. That crown was taken by the Dodge Viper. The story remains largely the same. The Corvette is a great car. I've driven the C5 and it's a blast in a straight line. But take it on some back roads and it's just not gonna handle like the Maserati that I drove. The European cars just have the edge. Again, with the sixth generation, it's the same thing. We've got some great all around improvements, but if you wanted to compete at a global level, you had to go to the top trim, the ZR1, which definitely held its own against race spec cars from around the world. But you also had to spend $120,000 on a Corvette. And at that price, why not just get the competition? But now, you don't need six figures to hang with the best, not even close. The C7 Corvette, which debuted in 2014, finally matches the bite to Chevy's bark. Finally, with this generation, Chevrolet has a dog in the race. Up front is the fifth and latest generation of the LS motor, the LT1. It's 6.3 liters, and in this base model, the naturally aspirated V8 pumps out 460 horsepower and 465 foot-pounds of torque to match. I've talked about this before. The torque feel of a car is directly correlated to how fun it is. And boy, is this car fun. We are in eco mode, and I just got sent back into my seat. I, I'm smiling, and I can't even help it. I'm not sure why one would even drive a Corvette in eco mode, but if you decide to do that, don't worry, you can still smoke people at the lights. It's smart, too. You've got an electronic limited slip differential and fancy wishbone suspension, and you can even opt for a magnetic ride. And it's not just the mechanical components of this car that are smart, the interior is very advanced as well. You've got a gorgeous modular digital dash up front. You've got five different drive modes that you can select from eco to track and everything in between. You've got a modular exhaust that changes the intensity of your exhaust note based on your drive mode. This is a fully fledged tech car. Gone are the extreme basics of the older generation Corvettes. 
and we are finally in the modern era. All that to say, this Corvette is exciting to drive. And it's even a match for sports cars from across the pond. And this is just the base model. If you want to, you can take a step up a few performance packages to the Z06. Then you're gonna get a supercharger, the fancy magnetic suspension, and a bunch of carbon fiber, and you've got yourself a bona fide track monster. It follows in the spirit of the C6 ZR1, which was the first Corvette to be developed on a track. But not only is the Corvette a contender in the performance ring, it is one of the best looking cars made right now. It's a bold statement, I know, especially when you consider how different this one looks than Corvettes of the past. No more iconic round tail lights like in the previous generation. There are more hard lines on the design of this car than there ever have been, and every single one is dramatic. It follows the classic sports car cues of long hood and short deck, but it takes it a step further. It has huge front haunches and a big rear. It looks ready to pounce. Standing still, this car looks fast. It looks modern. It looks up to date. I feel like all of the Corvettes that came out in years past kind of look dated as they rolled off the showroom floor. When I'm driving around and I see one of these, I have to check two or three times to make sure it's not a Ferrari. And if that isn't high praise, I don't know what is. Maybe it even looks better? So finally, America has produced a world-class sports car. But what impresses me most is that they've managed to accomplish all of those things while holding on to one of the most important elements of any Corvette made. Just about anybody can own one. The Corvette continues to be a blue collar hero. In 2014, this base model cost only $52,000 brand new. And now, three years later, you can get a used one in good condition for under 40. That's a 460 horsepower sports car for less than 40 grand. And it's not like you're just paying for the engine. It's also fantastic to be in. The C5 that I've driven, while a great time, is mostly plastic. But here, everything I'm touching, leather steering wheel, leather door sill, leather dash, there's a little plastic, but everything looks well designed and feels high quality. And if you step on it, it'll put your eyeballs in the back of your head for $40,000. I mean, people have been going on about bang for your buck with this car, but they're right. <laughs> I even went on Chevrolet's website and I built my own Z06 with some toys on it, and it still came in at just under $100,000. That's nuts. It has 650 horsepower and at that point you're knocking on Lamborghini and Ferrari's door and you're paying a quarter of the price. No exceptions, no caveats. The C7 Corvette is a force to be reckoned with. I've been infatuated with the way this car looks ever since it came out and I've always heard that it was finally everything Chevrolet wanted it to be. But having gotten to drive it, I am convinced that this is everything you could want in a sports car and more. With 460 horsepower to play with and drop dead good looks, this is one of my favorite cars out right now. And with such an affordable price, you might be looking at your next new car. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe. We've got new stuff coming out very soon. I shared a lot of my opinions on the Corvette, but I want to hear yours as well, so be sure to comment below and let me know. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you on the next one.